Welcome to MAT 2LB booklet number 8, Fractions. Lesson number 1, Introduction to Fractions. Now I know fractions can, for certain students, call up um, some pretty terrifying memories. Uh, they never really understood fractions or never particularly liked or understood fractions. Hopefully, over the course of your grade 9 math course and now further into your grade 10 math course, you'll develop um, a better understanding and a little less fear about fractions. And we're going to start right here in Lesson 1 by going over some of the things you would have learned in grade 9, which include the terminology and types of fractions. So let's just jump right in with terminology. Terminology, fractions, when we look at them, as we can see over here with this big number and a line and a small, uh, sorry, and a number underneath, fractions have a top and a bottom. The top number, we have a particular name for it, and the name for the top number is numerator. And the numerator sits, as I said, right on top of the line and the other number underneath. So the uh, numerator, that's the top number. The bottom number, different name, it's called the denominator. Denominator. And the denominator, as I said, is underneath the top number and underneath that line. And speaking of that line, it also has a particular name. The line between the numerator and the denominator is called the fraction bar or fraction line, but I'm going to try to use the word fraction bar when I'm working with it. So there's our fraction bar that splits up the numerator and the denominator. There it is right there. So that's our terminology. Numerator, number on the top. Denominator, number on the bottom. Fraction bar, the line that goes between them. Now let's look at the different types of fractions that we have. You'll notice we've got three listed here. We have proper fraction, improper fraction, and mixed fraction. And each one of them has sort of a characteristic that helps us identify them. So let's start with the top one, is proper fraction. Now you'll notice that when we are given a proper fraction, the numerator, I'm just going to put a little explanation over here, numerator is smaller than the denominator. Denominator. Long words. And that's how we can identify a proper fraction, because we can see here that 3 is smaller than 5. So this is true. Let's move on to the second type. The second type is improper fraction, and an improper fraction is sort of the complete opposite of that, where you have a numerator that is larger than the denominator. And again, we can see that in this case because 9 is indeed greater than 4. So two types of fractions so far. Proper fraction, a smaller numerator than denominator. Improper fraction, larger numerator than denominator. Now to the last one, a mixed fraction. A mixed fraction it has a whole number and a fraction. And we'll be really specific. We'll say a proper fraction. And again, we can see that to be true because here we have our whole number kind of sitting out front and then a proper fraction because 3 is going to be smaller than 7. So those are our three types. Mixed fraction, a whole number and a proper fraction. An improper fraction, a larger numerator than denominator. And a proper fraction, smaller numerator than denominator. So let's jump down and try a few of these examples here together. Identify each of the following fractions as proper, improper, or mixed fraction. Let's have a look. Our first example is 2 over 1. So again, the question we want to be asking ourselves when we look at this, what's the relationship between the numerator and the denominator? Is the numerator bigger or smaller? And in this case, 2 is larger than 1, therefore what we have here is an improper fraction. 
improper. Let's look at the next one down the line. Same idea here. We don't see a whole number. That's sort of, I guess that's sort of the first thing I look at is to see because a mixed fraction is a little bit easier to see, notice or, or determine because it's got that big whole number out front and then the proper fraction. So if you don't see a whole number out the front, you know it's not going to be uh, a mixed fraction. So in this case, I don't see a number out front, so I know it's not going to be a mixed fraction. But I am curious about the relationship between the numerator and the denominator. And in this case, the 12 is smaller than the 13. Therefore, we're talking about a proper fraction. Last example. Aha, now this is the one here. It has a number out front. This one right here tells us that this is going to be a mixed fraction. Again, because it has a whole number out front, that's what's going to designate it as a mixed fraction. Without the mixed fraction, we have to look at the numerator and denominator to really determine. In this case, it's a little bit easier. It's just hanging that big, biggest number hanging out front. So this is the end of lesson one. If you're a little bit fuzzy on some of the terminology, still go back and rewatch parts of the lesson. If you're feeling good, head off to the worksheet, and we'll see you in lesson number two.